I was probably just like any other kid, raised in a neighborhood where I think every person was Italian. Tony Severo grew up going to church a lot. In fact, practically every day. I was a good kid. I wanted to grow up to be a good kid and, and to do things for Jesus. Um, at the same time, it wasn't real. It's not that he had trouble believing in God. He had trouble believing in himself. I had yet to discover that I was good enough for him, that he loved me the way that I was. One area where Tony felt good enough was sports. He grew up with dreams of turning pro someday. But that spring, just before his 12th birthday, tryouts for, for baseball were coming up. And, um, and I remember um, practicing and playing one night. I was crying because the pain in my hips were so very sharp, like a knife was going right through my hip. And immediately I, I thought of two things. If I told my parents about it, they would make me stop playing sports. And number two, we were too poor to, to go to the doctor. As the weeks turned into months and baseball season gave way to football season, his parents didn't notice his discomfort or his limp as much as they did his unbelievable growth spurt. I used to wear only hand-me-downs for my cousin. Now all of a sudden, I had to wear hand-me-downs for my uncles. <laughs> what no one knew at the time was that there was a problem with Tony's pituitary gland that caused his bones to grow faster than the muscles and cartilage around them. As his height increased, so did his pain. Something had to give, and it did. I um, was running home and there were some bushes in the front yard and I jumped over and I collapsed. His quick growth had caused his upper leg bones to lose blood flow, which over time made them so fragile that that, that simple jump popped them right out of his hip sockets. I was on a drug-induced coma because the pain was so great. That's why Tony has no memory of the two 18-hour surgeries he endured over the next few days. Because he had gone untreated for so long, the damage was extensive. Muscle, bone, cartilage had begun to die from lack of blood flow. At the same time, the compromised blood vessels that were left started bleeding uncontrollably. That's when the doctor decided um, he had to cut out more cartilage and muscles to be able to um, make sure the bleeding didn't kill me. And he had to make a tough decision because there was so much blood. He decided to save my life instead of my legs. Days later, as Tony woke up and became more aware of what was going on around him, his doctor tried to help him face his situation and his future. And then we used pins to secure both your legs to your hips. So how long till I get better? Am I gonna be able to play next season? Normally after this type of operation, you'd be looking at about six months in a wheelchair. I mean, if you'd have come to me after this first happened, I might have been able to so what are we talking, a year? Tony, you need to understand. You let this go a long time. The disease got very advanced. You've lost cartilage, bone, ligaments, and muscle around your hip on both sides. Those are the structures that support you when you stand. And they're gone. So are you saying I'm never gonna be able to walk again? When I heard that, it's like, this can't be happening to me. I'm one of God's good kids. I pulled the covers back and there I saw two legs bandaged and bloodied. I remember thinking I would have rather died than have to live life as a cripple. But that's exactly what he found himself trying to do. Home tutors helped him with his studies for a while, but when it came time to go back to school, he found himself isolated from his friends in a special needs class. He grew more and more depressed and disinterested. I wasn't praying to be healed, which shows that you don't have any hope. When you don't have any hope, you don't even pray to get out of the pit. Fortunately, God didn't wait for Tony to make the first move. I was out back with my sister and she would try to do everything she could to fill the void of what my friends used to fill. So we would play catch with the football and a storm came off the lake and it just started to rain like anything. And um, Karen came behind me and she started to push me and she pushes me right out of the wheelchair into this mud puddle and we're in the backyard and um, I'll, I'll never forget asking God, could you help? And all of a sudden, it wasn't a voice, 
but it was as strong of a premonition as I've ever had. And I knew someday I would walk. And I looked at my sister and I said, Karen. And she said, what? And I said, I got to tell you something. She said, no, I got to tell you something. And because um, God had spoken to her at the same time. And I said, I'm going to walk again. And she said, yeah, I know. As hard as everyone worked to convince Tony that his disability was permanent, he worked even harder to keep that spark of hope alive. Jesus became as close where I, I, I knew he knew my name and I, 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 I could sense him. I learned his voice. I felt his love. That was growing. But at the same time, there was a stalemate that my prayer life was, heal me, Lord, heal me, Lord, heal me, Lord. What I had to come to learn was, was maybe the toughest um, principle I've ever had to learn. And that was more than being healed, God wanted me to be whole. Once, while Tony was in the hospital for an extended stay, there was an older lady in the church in her 70s or 80s. Her name was Leona Morehouse. So she started sending me cards. She started sending me cards almost every day. Tony wasn't very interested in what a 75-year-old might have to say. So the cards piled up until late one night when he couldn't sleep. I picked one up, the top one up, and I opened it up and inside in her handwriting of a 75-year-old lady was um, the scripture, Joshua 3.5. Consecrate yourself today, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things. And um, I picked another one up and there it was in her handwriting. And she would always change it just to consecrate your heart today, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things. Consecrate your mind today. And it was that night I felt God saying, I need your heart. It's not mine yet. I, I said to him, if I am in a wheelchair for the rest of my life, that's okay, because I have you. No more conditions. No more favors. I give you my heart for who you are. Tony discovered a whole new dimension to his faith, and almost immediately, nothing happened. He was still in his wheelchair, still making frequent trips to his doctor's office. The first thing we used did was take an x-ray. And so they took an x-ray, and we seemed to wait an inordinate amount of time. Tony, we're gonna do one more set of x-rays. We'll be back in just a minute. In fact, they redid those films multiple times. Tony and his mom waited for what seemed like forever until his doctor came in. I'm sorry I've taken so much of your time today. Oh, It's just there are signs that some things have changed. No, what is it? What's wrong? I don't know. Let me take a look here. I could see him tense up as soon as he, he touched my legs. And, and he kept examining him and pulling him up and bringing him all over. So he started calling the muscles and, and the parts in my hips. Articular cartilage? Removed. Probably on the third time, I started realizing there's something there that, that hasn't been there. Now, Tony. Here's what I want you to do for me. I want you to slide off that table and stand up. That's not funny. No. Oh, believe me, I'm serious. What are you saying? What's, what's going on? I honestly don't know. But I want you to try. Listen to me. And I was scared to, to just move. But I knew that if I didn't slide off and take this moment, I would stay seated for the rest of my life. I stood up got to the doctor and hugged him. <laughs> I think it's safe to say that we're witnessing a miracle. The pins that had been drilled into Tony's hip to secure his legs were removed. It took six months of intense therapy after that to teach him how to walk again, but God kept his promise and gave Tony a complete recovery. I don't believe that you have to be in a wheelchair to come to a place where you realize you're not whole. I also know that God created you and me for something amazing. And we settle for safe instead of awesome. God can do amazing things.